You go through life deceiving yourself over and over again, sabotaging your every chance towards happiness, success and freedom. The following are few types of self-sabotage patterns that you need to keep in mind as you navigate the world and your relationships. Number 1. You see change as dependent on others. Your mind convinces you that you need people's support, approval or absence to change your behaviors and life. You wait until the perfect circumstances arise. You wait until your parent gives you the heads up. Remember, you don't need anyone's permission to be a man, a woman or yourself. You say, if only my spouse would support me, maybe then I would be a better father. If only my friends would go away for the weekend, only then I can work on my novel. Pushing responsibility for your own change on others is a deceptive trick to keep you stagnant. Number 2. You spend too much time building systems and perfecting procedures instead of taking action. We are all guilty of this in some shape or form. Those countless hours watching useless videos on how to stop procrastination. Another sneaky way of procrastinating or escaping from oneself and the hardships of life. People are not that dumb. Deep down they know what to do. They simply don't do it. Next time you are watching another procrastination video, drag your ass to the desk and do the minimum one minute of work and go from there. That's still better than being busy instead of being productive. Efficiency is doing things right. Effectiveness is doing the right things. Number 3. You go through a denial binge cycle as your approach for pleasure. You stop yourself from experiencing simple pleasures or taking a breather to save time or minimize regret but end up spending an enormous amount of time doing something completely useless or foolish. For example, you would not watch a movie you really like to save time but end up watching countless hours of YouTube videos when combined are worth triple the time. Number 4. You make people too reliant on you hindering your progress. It's useful to be dependable and reliable in your life and career, but too much of anything spoils the experience. Pay attention to your propensity to feed other people's dependency, playing the savior archetype, infantilizing the ones you rely on. You can't have enough time for your endeavors and projects if you are constantly tied up with unnecessary commitments and responsibilities. Ask yourself, Am I making people codependent? If the answer is yes, stop doing everything for everyone. Parents are often guilty of creating eternal children. Number 5. You choose to be miserable instead of happy when happiness is an option. Dostoevsky said that man is the ungrateful biped. Most of us are not grateful for what we have and constantly looking for something else. The grass is greener on the other side. Ambition is great, but it shouldn't be mixed up with psychological lust, endless needs. Marcus Aurelius used to practice this. He would list a person in his life and write a couple of sentences about that person in a journal. What they taught him, either directly or indirectly. It's a form of gratitude. Another form is to simply write one thing you are grateful for. Just one. Try to do only one in the beginning of each day. You do it in the beginning because it influences the entirety of your mood. Number 6. You overcomplicate things and conduct endless research to find the perfect solution. I used to have a horrible reading habit. When I read something I didn't understand, I would google that term to death. And after one hour of research, I continue reading and discover that the author already explained everything simply and shortly in the following paragraph. That lack of patience, that hunt for the perfect explanation, for the perfect solution, blinds you from achieving your goal and robs you of your time. Number 7. You overly focus on decreasing negative interactions instead of increasing positive ones when you are trying to improve a relationship. It's natural to feel pain more intensely than pleasure, for example. If you lose $5, you would feel more intensely than if you gain 20 it would last longer. Hence, loss aversion is a thing. In relationships, the trick is to create more positive associations and shared experiences with your partner 
to balance the negative moments. Fights are inevitable. If you avoid them, you waste opportunities for clarification. The same way doubt is good in relationships. Because doubt is the beginning of exploration. It's the willingness to know more about the other person than just automate their personality into what you find ideal. Create more positive memories. Number 8. You accuse people of certain things and behaviors that you are guilty of as well. Some parents are extremely guilty of this. They would complain about their children's mannerisms and behaviors while they keep doing the same thing. A mother would advise her daughter not to date a certain type of guys, but she continues to fall for the same type. Whenever you want to criticize someone, ask yourself if you are merely projecting, if you are guilty of the same thing. Number 9. In influence, you use the same useless strategies and tactics. Let's say you try to get someone to do something for you, or push them towards a specific direction, or stop them from taking a certain action. You decide an approach, but it doesn't work. You do it over and over again, but it doesn't work, until it becomes super obvious and create unnecessary problems in your relationship. The stereotype of the overly nagging wife is an example of this. Don't wait until you are a sinking sun. Change the approach and tweak things until they work instead of beating one approach to death. Number 10. You overpay for expensive products and services as a form of risk aversion. You don't need the best product for everything in your life. Some things just need to be good enough. Brands convince you that you need to fulfill all these criteria and get all the accessories to ensure that things run smoothly and your product doesn't flop. But it's a lie. Even the best products are not necessarily the most expensive. You end up buying things you don't need, eventually having the things you own owning your bank account. If you are looking for more of these, you can find them in this article, 30 Types of Self-Sabotage and What to Do About It. I didn't mention all of them in this video, so you can go and read that article. This playlist contains the types of people you need to avoid in your life. Watch it. See you guys in the next video. Stay sharp.